Welcome. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to draw openings in the building fabric onto the individual surfaces of your model. During the tutorial I'll explain the purpose of subsurfaces and how to apply them and show you how to draw doors and glazing onto a surface. A subsurface is an opaque construction element that is drawn onto a surface as an exception to the main surface construction and is therefore a quick and easy way of applying different constructions and thermal properties to different parts of a single surface. Examples of where subsurfaces can be used to simplify the modelling process are adding insulated infill panels above or below glazing, drawing a low level masonry dwarf wall onto the profile sheet wall of an industrial building, or applying a section with a rendered or decorative brickwork finish to part of a masonry wall. Subsurfaces can also be used to represent the thermal properties of structural elements such as lintels and the sections of wall containing structural columns. There are two stages involved in defining subsurfaces which are selecting the construction to be applied and actually applying the subsurface by drawing it onto the existing surface. Subsurface constructions are selected within the subsurface header of the construction tab here. They're created and loaded in the same way as constructions shown previously and like the other constructions you can apply them to as many different parts of the building as you wish. To demonstrate the use of subsurfaces I'll apply a rendered wall surface to the area between the windows on the north facade of the ground floor east block. I previously created a rendered wall construction which I'll load as the default wall subsurface at building level. I'll now quickly navigate to the required surface in the layout tab by double clicking on the glazing. Note that the windows are currently coloured grey to denote that the openings on the surface have not been modified and have inherited all the default data. I then select the subsurface tool and draw on the subsurface between the windows using the snap points. The glazing is now identified by the yellow outline here and the subsurface is blue. The yellow glazing at surface level indicates that the surface has been customized. The blue area of the wall will now assume the properties of the particular subsurface construction loaded at the respective level. If I want to add another subsurface with different construction properties I simply draw it on in the same way then go to that surface and load the different subsurface construction. For the purposes of demonstration I'll assume that there's a solid concrete lintel above the windows. Then go to the subsurface and load the lintel from the construction tab. Using the navigation panel I can quickly check that both subsurfaces applied to this wall have the correct constructions loaded. Notice that subsurfaces are, are visible in the edit screen at building level here, which again helps you to check that you've applied them to the correct surfaces. Internal and external door constructions are also specified in the subsurface header of the construction tab. 
Doors can be selected from the library of existing door constructions, which we can see here. I'll now select and load the insulated personnel door from the existing doors library at building level. Many doors in modern non-domestic buildings are fully glazed. Please note that doors are treated as opaque surfaces during simulation, so glazed external doors should be modelled as windows. This will be discussed in more detail in later tutorials. I'll draw a door onto the east façade of the ground floor east block, replacing the centre window which I'll now delete. Double clicking on one of the existing windows takes me directly to the surface. Then I select the draw door tool left click to define the start point type in the horizontal and vertical dimensions of 1 meter by 2 meters so it's 1 space 2 and press enter to create the door which we can see is colored cyan here. As this is an opening, i.e. an opening in the main wall fabric, it's also visible at building level in the edit screen. Here. Glazing is defined in the openings tab, which will be covered in much more detail in later tutorials. Windows and roof lights can be drawn onto surfaces in exactly the same way as subsurfaces and doors. Most buildings have different glazing to wall ratios in almost every zone, and it's often better to set the glazing to none at building level and then draw it on according to the individual facade or surface details. I'll set the glazing to none on the ground floor east block. And then draw on my own bespoke glazing on the east facade. You'll notice that even though I set the glazing to none at block level, the windows have not been removed on the north and the east facades, but they have on the south. This is because where changes have been made to the subsurfaces, doors and glazing, the surface retains the customised data, and changes made to the facade layout in the glazing tab will then not affect the layout of those surfaces i.e. these changes won't be inherited. In this case you can either edit or delete the individual openings or go to the surface and use the clear to default tool to clear the custom openings and return the surface back to the default setting. I'll now use this option to create a default facade and then draw a few different window shapes. I'll start by drawing a window with an arch top surface. Using the polygon shape I can cre easily create more complex shapes. Using the arc line type to create the top perimeter. I can add a standard rectangular window using the rectangle option and either typing in the X and Y dimensions or specifying the second point with a mouse click. I can easily draw circular windows 
specifying the start point with a mouse click and the perimeter either by typing in the radius or selecting with a second mouse click. Or I can draw bespoke polygon shapes using construction lines and the drawing guides to help me accurately locate the endpoints. After selecting the roof surface, adding roof lights is done in exactly the same way as the other glazing. So I'll add a rectangular roof light which I'll now copy. Going back to building level we can also select and copy items as desired. You should bear in mind that the Energy Plus simulation engine is only able to treat rectangular and triangular windows. And for this reason, Design Builder first splits non-rectangular windows into triangles, and each triangle is modelled as a separate window. This triangulation of non-rectangular windows slows simulation down, so for the purposes of minimising simulation times, it's usually a good idea to simplify non-rectangular windows into rectangular windows of the same area and roughly the same position. This advice does not apply to SBEM and DBSIM calculations. In this tutorial I've shown you how to draw openings in the building fabric onto a surface. This leads us nicely into the next tutorial where we look in more depth at openings such as glazing, doors and vents.